the latest book that I uh, completed was 1919, A Graphic History of the Winnipeg General Strike. Now, uh, the strike occurred in uh, May, June of 1919, and it uh, involved over 30,000 workers who, who went on a general strike demanding, of course, uh, better working conditions, higher wages, uh, and the right to collective bargaining. The pivotal moment in, this, uh, in the story of the Winnipeg general strike is what is known as Bloody Saturday, which uh, occurred on June 21st, 1919. And it was when there was a peaceful uh, demonstration of the workers and their supporters in Winnipeg and the police and the vigilantes attacked. And, and that effectively ended the strike a few days later because of the brutality of the attack. And so in, when it came to draw that attack in 1919, I had the, the decision of, of, of how would I approach it? And I realized how do we approach violence, depicting violence in society uh, in, in popular culture and I didn't want the sequence of Bloody Saturday to be entertaining. I did not want it to be attractive. I did not want people to enjoy it and uh, I wanted to, it to be, I wanted to make something that was uh, a counter in opposition to how violence is, um, the complacency of violence being entertainment in popular culture and so how would I do that? And uh, in the case of um, Bloody Saturday, I, I decided to illustrate it as if I was a war artist, as if I was actually on the street during the, the, the Bloody Saturday events and drawing feverishly as the sound of horses' hooves got closer and, and uh, the movement was all around you. And I wanted the drawings to be rough and raw and uh, unfinished. And I wanted the reader to hold in their hands the tactile quality of, uh, of the grittiness of the street. And uh, in order to do that, I, uh, the drawings, as you can see, are very, very rough, overlaid uh, as, uh, on top of each other, and to create the sense of chaos. I needed also to try to uh, subvert the very nature of drawing correctly. And so in this case, I used a, a toothbrush, which I um, dipped into some water and then ground into some paint. And then I took a knife. And uh, as I'm over the, uh, standing over these drawings, I dragged the knife over the bristles and it caused paint to spray all over the place. And uh, it was something that I couldn't particularly control and that's what I wanted to do in order to reflect the, um, the messiness and the dynamic of this terrible, tragic day in labor history. And so with each project that you do, you, you alter your style a little bit. You get out of your comfort zone a little bit in terms of how you approach um, the particular story, depending on where it is. There is not just one style of drawing that I, I use in order to tell a story. There's always gotta be something there that is a little bit different in terms of how it relates aesthetically. And in some, some cases, you want to be, if it's a radical subject you're dealing with, you also want to take a radical approach to the drawing. And I, I tried to do that in, in uh, 1919 with the Bloody Saturday sequence by being taking a really radical approach to how the events were depicted. The strike made international headlines, and there were also um, sympathy strikes across Canada from British Columbia to Nova Scotia. And so it was that powerful as a, as a piece of uh, labor history. It's that important to Canadian history and, uh, and to the advent of uh, enshrining collective bargaining rights. I've got two graphic novel projects coming up. 
One of them is uh, a story of uh, the revolutionary Emma Goldman, and it covers the last year in her life. She died, which she lived in Canada, and she died in Toronto in 1940. And uh, my interest in it is, is really how did she maintain being an activist for 50 years uh, despite uh, the, the uh, attacks from members of the public and uh, harassment from police and arrest and, and uh, uh, trial and imprisonment and deportation and exile across Europe and finally ending up in Canada. How did she maintain her commitment to her ideals knowing that she would probably never live to see them realized? And I find that a profound story right there. And I think it's very relevant to today as we see uh, such a discouraging time right now in terms of, of uh, what's going on in the, in the world and, and how do we maintain our activism, how do we maintain our optimism. And this is why I'm making this book. It's really a book for, for any citizen who wants to, to, um, to protest, who wants to have a say in the world that they live in. One of the things with uh, making a graphic novel is that you have to draw people over and over again as characters and and that's that's kind of tough and so a solution I came up with is I made a uh, clay head for drawing purposes and I'll show you right now I uh, created this clay head of Emma Goldman and uh, she has little glasses on the thing that's good about it is you can draw it from any angle and uh, uh, and that's great, you know, it can be overhead, it can be uh, uh, this, you know, this way, and then you can also control the lighting. So I'm not sure how good we're going to see that, but it can be lighting from below or from the side, from above, from behind, and from the other side. And, um, and so that way you can heighten the level of dark and light on the face. and it gives you a lot of reference in terms of how you want to do it. And I also uh, make uh, scale models. And in the case of Emma Goldman, I made a scale model of her house, which I visited in uh, Toronto, where she lived and died. And so the thing about that is that I can, again, control it using a flashlight uh, in terms of how shadows fall, in terms of where people are, uh, where the light source is coming from, and, uh, and where the characters are placed in the room. And so I've, I like film noir a lot, and so this, this is where the influence of that came from. But it also opens up the idea of doing um, angles from way, way up top. What we see now in, in, uh, in the world is a, is a move towards authoritarianism, of the idea of the great leader uh, determining your existence. And, uh, and, and these books are fighting back against that. These books are about solidarity. They're about collective action. They're about ordinary people getting together and making social change and, uh, and, and uh, demanding social justice. And if, I, if I'm asked why am I doing any of these books, uh, you know, it, it's because I want to encourage people to get together. I want it to be that ordinary people should have power. They're the ones who, who are, are the majority. And so these books are a part of that to try to educate citizens and workers and try to encourage them and inspire them to what could be possible to do.